Oi, pessoas. Oi, gente. Oi, pessoal. What's up, guys? Como vai você? Tudo bem com você? Uh, how are you? <laughs> Hoje vou falar sobre o sotaque britânico. So, ever since I started my journey of learning uh, Brazilian Portuguese, um, I've had many discussions with people that are learning English. Um, and one of the questions that I get quite a lot is how can I speak with a British accent? Um, and for me, it's, it's quite a difficult question to answer because I for one am not a language teacher I don't have a great knowledge of uh, linguistics or the uh, science behind language and phonetics and how to speak specifically with a British accent I can only recommend TV shows uh, films um, the immersion technique into British culture um, in order to achieve speaking with a British accent. I cannot advise any technical ways of speaking with a British accent. It is just not in my knowledge. Um, I am just someone who grew up in England <laughs> who speaks with a, a British accent. Um, so yeah, it's hard for me to be able to advise someone technically how to speak with a British accent. So this week I spoke with a guy called Gabriel from Brazil and as I said, he's someone who wants to speak with a British accent. Um, I recorded the conversation and I'm gonna show you guys this conversation. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in learning how to speak with a British accent, uh, Gabriel is gonna tell you how he has achieved speaking with what I would consider quite a British accent. So I'm gonna get straight into it and I'm going to play the conversation now. And after the conversation with Gabriel, I'm going to tell you guys uh, five British TV series that you can find on Netflix Brazil uh, with Portuguese subtitles, which all obviously have British accents in. So yeah, I'm going to recommend these TV shows for you guys if you want to try to learn a British accent. Um, but you can check that out at the end of the video. See you guys soon. Hello guys. I'm Gabriel, I'm 19 years old and I'm here today with Jake. Nice to meet you, Gabriel. Gabriel or Gabriel? Well, if you want to go for the accurate pronunciation, it's Gabriel. Perfect, cool. <laughs> um, okay, so, so yes, um, so we've been speaking a little bit about your learning of the English language and the fact that you want to speak with a British accent. Um, so I just want to ask you a few questions. Um, let's start with what steps have you been taking to try and speak with a British accent? Um, the first thing I tried to see was uh, why would I go for it? Had I been watching things uh, that came from Britain? Had I been exposed to it anyhow? But that was um, to see how much I was integrated to the point where I was trying to steer clear of American productions for a while. See if there was any, if we would play any sort of uh, role in this sort of assimilating the sound. After I came across IPA, which is the International Phonetic Alphabet, just going, I had always neglected when I had dictionaries um, to see all the symbols underneath the words. I thought I would need them. But then I came to realize they're uh, very helpful. Yeah, and then I think it was trying to understand which sounds I had um, that I was perhaps um used to and if they had any equivalent or matched any english sounds and the sounds that i didn't have in my first language so those would be would have been the ones i had to work on so it's a lot of brazilians naturally uh inherit the kind of more american accent when they speak english um so just talk a little bit about why you prefer to speak with a british accent well i could go hours and hours on talking about it uh, because I thought I feel like in at least with language acquisition, I always wondered why people find it so difficult to learn English. 
it never made much sense. And then when it came to pronunciation as well, there's this whole stigma that, at least in Brazil, if you're trying to pronounce words, like imagine you're, li you're hearing a tape, you're listening to how someone is saying, if you try to actually emulate, people will poke fun at you. Uh, but that's something that, I don't know, so many people are insecure about the way they speak because they wanted to say, speak in a certain way. And I think after I came across some videos of some, an actress, she was born in London, but her, dad's, her mom's Brazilian, so she, brought, she was brought up bilingual. And I, I came to see, like, she's speaking perfect Portuguese, she's sounding Brazilian, and I was so surprised because I was, wow, if there are people who are able to do that, it's just about sounds, about biomechanics. You know, I, I think maybe being a dancer, I was very curious to see how far a body can go in trying to act or trying to at least emulate sort of movement because this is all like a uh, choreography going around, you know, tongue, where, where, well, tongue placement, how wide your lips are open. So yeah, I think it was more like a self-experiment to try doing something people usually try to have a very uh, preconceived idea, oh, it's impossible, don't even try, you'll make a, fun, a fool of yourself. And yeah, I just felt also, um, I think I personally don't like following uh, trends. And at least I felt like, okay, everyone likes America. Do I really need to like America that way? And I have been watching like, British shows for a while and I thought okay it's gonna be fine I just need to try to figure more about the country try to I feel like for me as well um so I'm, I'm very much like I said at the beginning of learning Portuguese um and I guess like the immersion has been like a huge part in in kind of um my pronunciation because initially when I started to learn uh Portuguese words, I probably spoke it with a, a, just a very British accent and you need to, you need to pronounce it with a kind of that accent, the, the accents, the words. Um, so I started watching a lot of Brazilian shows and listening to Brazilian um, music. So naturally, I guess when you listen to, when you're watching British shows, you're more likely to inherit that, that accent. How important do you think it is to have an accent of a native country? For example, like yourself, um, do you, if yeah. you, you are going to come to to England, do you feel like a pressure to have to speak with English with a British accent? I try to think. I try to build a parallel with Portuguese. I wonder if someone had learned European Portuguese and they would move to Brazil. Um, it depends on like I don't feel Brazilian people. I, pers I personally don't think that they are that much exposed that familiar with European Portuguese so if you met a foreigner and they would think oh why are you talking like that you're making things hard for me to understand but I think it doesn't apply the same doesn't apply to English because I suppose everyone is very used to you know American way of speaking with accent or expressions so yeah it all comes down if you're wanting to feel like a part of community because I imagine with words like biscuits cookies or like jumpers or trainers like sometimes I feel like you can get to a different level of connecting with people and fitting in and if you're showcasing like willingness to you know talk like them but um, I feel like they're also a problem with identity because some people they think there's a pressure in order to fit in I remember having seen a video of this Polish lady she had been living in London for a while and she felt she was missing out opportunities at work because she didn't, people didn't like the way she spoke. Um, so yeah, it's something very personal. It all comes down to how people, if people are okay and they don't want to even bother to work towards sounding, and other people also get it natural. Like some people are very good listeners. They've, very, they've got very tuned ear, so they can tell the difference between very subtle sounds and implement them. So, um, yeah, I personally don't think I've got mm, the pressure because I don't know if it was because after a while, I even had like, it's very funny talking about it, even with a Brit, because I don't know what I sound like to you. And I had so many people tell me different things. Like I had, uh, once I was in this uh, shared flat and there was a lady, like she was just scared of mid twenties from London. And then I briefly asked her something like, I knew she was from London, but I wanted to hear from her. And she said, oh, are you from London as well? And I was like, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, like, no, of course it wasn't good, but at least, why did she ask me? Like, was it something familiar? Well, um, and then it felt like it's quite nice to feel like you belong somewhere. And I think that is with language. I've loved English for so long. I want to be able to, at least, if I can't have, if I can't overcome the fact that I wasn't born, you know, bilingual, at least I want to try to emulate that. Yeah, it's funny, like the things you mentioned about um, jumpers and, and cookies, biscuits, jumpers and sweatshirts. Um, because I think like you, you understand like British humour quite well. Um, I think we're always, it's typical for us to make a joke. Um, if I said like uh, an American word amongst British people, it, there's no way that that uh, that would that no one would comment. Someone's going to comment on it and make a joke about it because I guess we like to make jokes about you know Americans. Um, and for yourself, obviously you're you're a non-native speaker speaking English, so. Um, it's less likely someone to make a joke, but someone might, someone might comment, you know, and I guess, like you said, it is, it's a case of you wanting to fit in, which leads me on to the next question is like, it's the whole identity thing, which is, so for me, um, and it, it, I, I'll probably say it's from a naive point of view, because I've not ex fully experienced living in another country trying to speak another language. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say like, for someone who approaches me and said, I really want to speak with a British accent, I would say don't worry about it because, you know, um, firstly, no one's going to, you're speaking English. So if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to communicate. And I, I, it, to be honest, not everyone's going to have that point of view. Um, people are going to be a bit more narrow minded and think, okay, I don't understand what you're saying. You're speaking with a strange accent. But also, I, I like the idea of someone speaking with a different accent um because in the uk we have such a variety of accents so like for yourself if you you have a little bit of a, an accent which represents someone speaking english from brazil then i feel like that's your identity um but like i said it's from maybe a naive point of view and what what are your perspectives on that and that whole thing of like keeping your think, identity yeah because it was very i mean i tried uh, at first i was like okay I felt so confused talking to people because I would talk to some people and they would say, like, I personally talked to a guy from Manchester and he said, oh, well, I thought, I think you're from London. And it, uh, like, because I, I happened to have met a guy from London as well who lived um, a long time, I think a year or so in Brazil. And he had a very good accent. Like, perhaps I could tell very, like, I don't know, some sounds like crazy. This mind's up oh, in my, like, I wonder, I don't really know what other sounds I make or like, I don't know, intonation patterns. I do use, I give people like, oh, you know, I'm from Brazil because, you know, I, this identity thing, uh, I don't even know if I come across as sounding Brazilian when I talk to people because I have people tell me, oh no, you don't sound Brazilian at all. Like it might be from somewhere else, but not Brazilian. But then it's so personal because it depends on if you have talked to many Brazilians and if you have talked to another Brazilian who has been trying to talk with um, a British accent. And I realized, Am I really going to be expecting this sort of external validation from others? Do I really need, because, okay, if someone came to me and said, well, well I would mistake you with someone from this place. Okay, I've achieved, and then what I expected to achieve. But then someone else comes to say, no, I can tell you're Brazilian. And then I'll be like, oh, no, other thing went down, downhill, and I didn't manage to. So, yeah, I feel, like, very concerned at times because, Mm, I felt like I really want to be able to just show how much I appreciate the culture, not the country itself, but I, I don't like the culture, the arts. I think, I, when I think of Britain, the only thing, I don't really think about, yeah, people are very gentle, uh, or like you have this figure of very posh people. No, I like very the, the suburban or the middle class aspect of it, how they're ordinary people, and some series are talking about very messy lives of teenagers, and it's something you can relate to coming from Brazil, like we are a massive country in our, in our way. <laughs> so to see that being represented, at least in London, you see like such a mix of cultures. Um, yeah, you gotta find a place where you feel comfortable. Yeah, I mean, in terms of living in London, um, it's so diverse. And I'm so used to hearing English being spoken in either, it can be London, 
Northern English, Scottish, Southern English, or it can be anywhere across the world. Um, and that's in day to day life. So I guess like for yourself, it, it wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be strange to, for you, like the, the, you speaking English would be completely normal to, to most people living in London. Um, it just comes to when you live in other regions of of England that you you might stand out a little bit you people will recognize that you have a different accent um, but like I said I, I always thought it was quite nice to be able to have that as your identity but you, your point of view is it's kind of being able to fit in which I completely understand I think that if I was in Brazil living in Brazil for a long period of time um, I probably would want my accent to, to be fit in as much as possible I, I don't know if I would constantly want it to be like I it's the foreigner speaking Portuguese. It's the guy from England speaking Portuguese. I would, after a while of living there, I'll just prefer to be seen as someone that lives in Brazil speaking Portuguese. Maybe you could try to think so, right? Um, imagine you've got a dance move and someone has taught you the instructions, like, oh, okay, you can go front, back, jump, turn, um, fast, slow. Uh, and then you try to do it and try to think the first time is quite clumsy. Do, do you want to go on stage and yeah. perform something very clumsy? It all comes down if you're okay with it. Uh, because it, uh, in a way, like, if you pronounce it like uh, Presidente, Presidente, instead of Presidente, you know, it's a, also a message that you're okay with pronouncing a, a, a wrong version, but then you're going to see how much value you give to this being wrong do you really see that's a big wrong or just a variation of it because yeah it's about embracing diversity very true just so guys i hope you enjoyed that conversation with gabriel um i was really impressed with his knowledge on language and i was really impressed with his knowledge on the british culture um considering he hasn't actually been to the uk in my opinion he speaks uh with a british accent very well. It's, this is something that I want to have uh, a topic of discussion about. Perhaps we can post it in the comments. Um, during this video, I spoke a little bit about uh, identity of an accent. Um, and I said that for me, a guy who, who speaks English uh, as a second language is enough. Um, it, they don't need to have a British accent. Um, and I quite like the idea of that person having their native countries accent while speaking British for example they're French and they speak English with a French accent you know it's their identity um, but I want to know what you guys think about it if you was living in for example USA or if you was living in the UK or if you was living in Australia and you were speaking English would you prefer to speak with the native accent of that country or would you just prefer to speak with the accent that you inherited uh, whilst learning to speak English. Um, post in the comments and let's have a discussion about this. So guys, the five TV shows that you can find on Netflix Brazil, they are all British TV series. Um, number one is a TV show called The English Game. It's a British historical drama about the, uh, the origins of football and how it began in England. Um, there's a variety of accents there. Um, I believe that one of the football teams is a group of upper class guys, so they speak with quite a posh accent. And there are also some other accents from Scotland and around the country. Um, so it's a good TV show to watch. It's a good TV series to watch. Of course, it will have Portuguese subtitles. Sex Education. This is a good one to watch if you like comedy. Um, it's about a student, a teenager, who is at school and his mum is a sex therapist and throughout his life he's kind of had a had this knowledge of sex imposed on him he starts up his own uh, sex therapy classes in his school so he ends up teaching other other students um, about the psychology of sex um, so it's quite funny it's a good TV show to watch um, again a variety of accents for you guys to immerse yourself in um, so that's number two number three is The Crown uh, British period drama about the royal family not something that I'm particularly interested in myself but it's a good TV series for anyone that enjoys history British history um, 
And of course, everyone speaks with a very, very posh accent. Um, so if you want to speak with a nice, lovely British accent, like the Queen, watch The Crown. I recommend it. Criminal UK. This is also on Netflix Brazil. Um, haven't watched it yet, but I read a little bit about it, and it's a uh, drama around. Um, if I mean, if you like Doctor Who, it does feature David Tennant. It's a crime drama. Um, each episode revolves around one character and one crime, and it's basically about the development of the investigation of a crime and the suspect. Um, it's a good TV show. I've heard quite gripping um, and yeah of course again British accents to immerse yourself in. Five uh, a personal favourite of mine it's called Afterlife uh, written and directed by Ricky Gervais who also stars in it. Uh, Ricky Gervais was the creator of The Office UK um, which I think is a great TV show. It's a very good TV show if you want to learn about British humour because uh, he is kind of the epitome of British humour. Um, yeah, so Afterlife is about a guy who has lost his wife to cancer and basically about him going for the grieving process of trying to uh, deal with life after his wife. Um, again, this TV show is um, this TV show is very like dry British humour. It's a good one to watch if you want to learn a little bit about British humour. Um, the accents are regional. They're just a generic kind of southern accent that features in a TV show, but again, a good one for you guys to watch. Um, I hope you enjoyed my recommendations, and um, yeah, as I said earlier, let's have a discussion in the comments about whether you would like to speak with a certain country's accent when learning another language. Um, do you think it's important? Me, myself, uh, if I was in Brazil, um, I think perhaps I would feel a little bit of pressure to try and speak with a local accent and probably try to hide any kind of uh, clues about me not being a native um, just because like Gabrielle said I would probably prefer to try and fit in but yeah let me know what you guys think and I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao!